Well, here we are. It is a beautiful Thursday morning. We have about, I don't know, less than 12 hours until the Browns-Jets game. And first things first, uh, the Browns, you know, they can clinch a playoff spot tonight with they win over the Jets. Now, both these defenses are really, really good. Yeah, I know, I, I know, you know, the Jets, and the Commanders game was a bit of a rough go. But I mean, come on, come on. Can you really, can you really blame that game for being the way it was? <laughs> it, it's the Commanders, so. <clears throat> so the Jets coming back. You know, in that game is a bit crazy, but it's whatever. Yeah, the Browns can go into playoff spot tonight. It's crazy. Um, I don't know if they can win the division, though. There has to be some things that go their way, like Baltimore losing twice and then winning out for them to win the division. But with Joe Flacco doing his thing, like just absolutely being a gunslinger, and just having a career resurgence, you know, Amari Cooper had, what, 250 yards last week, and Joke has been playing nice. I mean, the Browns can do no wrong, you know, right now. The Browns can do no wrong right now. So the fact that they're 10-5, and five, the fact that they could clinch a playoff spot tonight is just a lot. The fact that they still could be the five seed at the end of the day is going to say a lot about this Browns team. Like, this is a really good Browns team, man. If they have to go on the road, you know, I mean, man. Think of the storyline of Joe Flacco leading the Browns to the NFL playoffs. It's it's wild. Uh, so, yeah, the Browns are basically almost set regardless. They really just need to win. That's That'll be the safe option is for them to win tonight against the Jets. So there's that. Um, Detroit Dallas, it's a huge game. Detroit has already locked up the NFC North. They locked it up against the Vikings last Sunday. Dallas, unfortunately, the Cowboys lost in a heartbreaking game to the Miami Dolphins. But this game is huge. Uh, seeding is still kind of at stake because, you know, San Francisco, you know, got beat up, smacked around, you know, by Baltimore. Philadelphia's been struggling. Dallas has been up and down. Detroit has been up and down, you know, so. And there's no way anybody from the NFC South can catch, you know, any of these four teams. So, you know, <clears throat> for Dallas, this game is at home, so there will be no struggle trips or anything like that. Um, Detroit, you know, it's had a history, you know, this year of playing some really, really good games and then following it up with one of the worst performances I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, and, and that same thing goes true for the Dallas Cowboys. Like, again, it, it's something about these top tier games this year that have been really, you know, just not very good. Like, we all thought San Francisco Baltimore was going to be, you know, that good, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It really wasn't. So this game really could determine, you know, Dallas, you know, still fighting with Philly for the East. Uh, but for Detroit, this could do wonders for them. They could maybe move up to the two seed line at some point, you know, you know, the way the way golf, you know, has been playing and stuff like that. Completely with, you know, St. Brown Gibbs and, you know, Montgomery, you know, they they've been they've been on a tear. You know, Dallas still trying to get other guys involved on, you know, the offensive side of the ball, defense, you know, sometimes they will play absolutely, you know, magical. You know, for most of the game against Miami, they played a pretty good they did they did a pretty good job, you know. And then there's games like Buffalo where they just you know, just couldn't stop a thing. So the, the running attack of Gibbs and Montgomery is going to be a huge, huge thing for, you know, the Cowboys this week. And, you know, on the other side of the ball, Detroit is going to have to, you know, like like how Detroit has Ahmad Ross, St. Brown, you know, it's going to be C.D. Lamb on the other side. 
for the Lions to they have to stop. So what about Lamar? What about Lamar? Will the MVP hype continue? Because, you know, personally, like I said, like a week or two ago, I think Christian McCaffrey should be the MVP of the NFL this year, but that's not how this works. I would also say maybe Tyree Kill. But that's just not how this works. It's a QB award at this point. So, and Lamar played efficient, effective, and did just what he needed to do against 49ers. Again, the defense really helped out with those four Brock Purdy interceptions. But, you know, the MVP hype for Lamar Jackson, will that continue? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll find out on Sunday against Tyreek Hill and the Miami Dolphins because that is going to be one hell of a matchup right there. One hell of a matchup. And again, seeding is still on the line, too, in the AFC. So the Chiefs can't get it, but the Dolphins and the Ravens are certainly fighting it out for the one seed at this point. The Duda Bucks clinched the South on this Sunday, the last Sunday of 2023. Do they clinch against the New Orleans Saints? Maybe. Baker Mayfield has been playing some really solid football. The Bucks won four straight. New Orleans is reeling. You know, they don't know what direction they're trying to go with with Derek Carr and company. So we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. If the Bucks can do it on Sunday, then, I mean, hey, they absolutely deserve to host a playoff game. They absolutely deserve it. With the way that their season has been turned around, they absolutely deserve it. And then, you know, Raiders-Colts, that game is now interesting because of the way the Colts, you know, the Colts were able to, you know, do things all season long somehow. I don't know how the Colts are still in the situation that they're in after getting smacked around by Atlanta. But, you know, on Christmas Day, you know, the Raiders decided to just absolutely smother Patrick Mahomes and keep him, you know, completely – in check, keep the entire Chiefs offense in check. The defense could do really much of anything either. I mean, hell, ain't no caught only through 62 yards. So the Raiders game, you know, now that's an interesting third option. You know, if you're not watching, you know, the Saints-Bucks game or the Dolphins-Ravens, that's a just it's an interesting third option because the Raiders are still in the mix for the AFC West. <laughs> yes, which is very surprising. The Raiders are still in the mix for the AFC West. The craziest thing you could ever utter, but it but it's true. They're still in the mix. The Colts, you know, they're kind of you know in a weird position because there's a lot of teams that are like you know eight and seven, you know nine and six, you know. So the Colts are in a weird position, but they have to beat the Raiders. That is going to be. You know, a really interesting game. Uh, yeah, how about Russ? Russ got benched, which is very, very funny. How do you get benched for Jared Stidham? How do you get benched for him? I don't understand. You know, the Chargers, you know, the Chargers are basically out of it at this point with all the injuries they have. But I get it. It's probably because of, you know, Buddy reasons that Russell is benched, but uh, the, the Broncos still have a chance to win the AFC West. A, a small chance, but they still have a chance nonetheless. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's really the best idea here. I don't know if that's the best idea at this point, but whatever. Not, not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna complain about that too much. Speaking of the Chiefs, who still lead the AFC West by two games, <clears throat> you know, this game still means something, but again, the Chiefs can't get the number one seed. They will be going on the road if they, you know, if they make it out of the first round of, of, of the wild card anyway, and, you know, have to travel to either like Baltimore or Miami, you know, or maybe even, well, I would I wouldn't say Jacksonville, but yeah, they might have to travel for a game instead of staying in Arrowhead. Not calling it whatever it's called now, but it's still called I still call it Arrowhead. Yeah, Bengals, the Bengals, you know, with the way that they got spacked around by the Steelers, that was bad. And 
I mean, Jake Browning, you know, will throw a pick here, a pick there, and then you know the defense gave up. I mean, it's just like I don't, I don't know what kind of, I don't know what that game was on Saturday, but I know that was not a good game. I'll tell you that much. I thought it was going to be a good game. I thought it was going to complement the Arizona Florida Atlantic game very well, but it did not. And the Bengals, you know, now are like way down in the mix with a bunch of other eight and seven, nine and six teams now. So they're 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 in the mix for a playoff spot. They're like eleventh right now. That's how bad it is for this game. So Chiefs can still win the AFC West. All they have to do is beat the Bengals. Bengals have to beat the Chiefs in order to stay in the playoff hunt. But they also have to have other results go their way. Speaking of the Steelers, um, a very interesting game has popped up between them and the Seattle Seahawks. And again, the Seahawks are also fighting for a spot in the playoffs. As you know, again, only four teams have clinched. We have, you know, three spots up for grabs, but you know, the Seahawks, the Rams are basically fighting it out along with the Vikings, the Packers, and whoever in the NFC South will, you know, do whatever in the NFC South. So, so yeah, the Steelers are in position to be in position. They just have to get another win at, you know, they have to play like they did, you know, on Saturday, you know, with Pickens, you know, running 50-yard routes that goes for touchdowns. Everything like that. That's the type of stuff you want to see. That's the type of stuff this Pittsburgh offense has been able to do over the past month, really. So that's the type of stuff you want to see. The Seahawks, you know, pretty inconsistent team. That's why they're in. That's why they're in the position that they're in right now at eight and seven. But yeah, two eight and seven teams, you know, locking horns in this big time matchup. I love it. I love it. Definitely will complement Bengals Chiefs. Pretty well, because, because yeah, this is this is really you know this is really the week for it to be the week you know. So yeah, you know, a lot of teams are still in the playoff hunt. You know, I don't think I expected the Raiders and the Broncos to be revived, you know, from the dead as far as playoff contention goes. With two weeks to go, you know. The Dolphins, you know, could also clinch the AFC East this week, really, if they beat, you know, Baltimore. They could also clinch. Uh, AFC South still up for grabs. You know, it's a three-team race there. Again, in the East, absolute crapshoot right now between the Eagles and the Cowboys. And then, you know, the AFC West, we don't know what that wild card is going to be like. If we don't know what those last two wild cards are going to be like at this point, I mean, again, Vikings Packers is also the Sunday night game. I don't know if I'm going to be watching that at this point. You know, it's just the way things have been going. You know, Vikings Packers is that really the type of game you want to watch? You know, late. Who knows? But yeah, that'll do it for me. Uh, I'll get this downloaded and put it up. And this again, there's just a lot. That's going on in the NFL right now. A lot of injuries. TJ Hawkinson is out too for the year too. That's also something. And a lot of teams are just going to be fighting this week. And I mean, look at all these storylines that we have. I mean, there's just so many. So, yeah, that'll do it for me. Week 17 is almost here. And we're going to end 2023 off in the NFL with a bang.